Welcome back to the series of running Node-RED in the camera. In this video, we will go through one of the most powerful nodes here. It's the objects, the objects analytics. And you can do so much with, uh, with this node to detect something very, very specific or do some specific integration. So here in during the configuration, we can go through, there are three different types of outputs. So if we start with the detections, so that is getting every detection, meaning a bounding box where here is an object of this class. This produces a lot of data and a lot of processing is required. This is typically what access calls the metadata but it's kind of challenging to to process that the next after detections are trackers and they are being updated every every time an object has moved more than five percent of the view and you're getting where it is right now and where it came from and the age and everything and the path is once the object enters the scene and leaves the scene and that's when you're going to get the data. So we're going to go through all of them and, and taking a look at them. So here you can select everything or you can select something specific like only human or car or truck or bus or bike. Let's do everything there. And here the confidence level, it's a little tricky. So you have to play around with it, looking at the confidence level that you're detecting and if you want to filter um, where you're seeing false detections um, you need to increase the confidence level rotation is based on how the camera is rotated that if you see that the data is like upside down uh, you would put 180 degrees to rotate the data the center of gravity is the so this what stands for center of gravity. So depending on the use case, it's either the center of gravity is one single point on that object, and it could be either in the middle of the object, or if you're doing pathing and tracking, it's more likely if the camera is in perspective that you want to have that, that point by the feet or the wheels as close to the ground as possible, especially if you're going to be plotting this and, and things like that. So we can leave that, we can, I can show you the difference. So center of gravity predictions is that the analytics can provide predictive data. Um, that's the closest I would, you know, define this. Uh, you would get more detections and better paths doing that, but it could also lead to that you're getting detections like if a person, you see a person and he walks behind a wall, it would look like you're still tracking, but that's just the, the, the predictive data. So I'll leave that one in there. So if, if you select this one and you go up to the booklet, you have a documentation of this node and also the data structures. But so let's uh, just put a debug output on the this and uh, let's put the debug view and wait for a vehicle to drive by. Okay, so here we see uh, data coming in. So there was a, it was actually a bus uh, passed by. I can see that. So let's disable this one. Uh, so we're not going to get. So this was the first object, uh, the first uh, data coming in. So you have an, a unique ID, and if you look at, sorry, if you look at the next message, you see it's the same unique ID. You get a class, which is a bus. In this case, it's uh, the H is uh, one four, and okay, so it's it's coming in uh, not identical so this this would be the first one so it's probably on on the node red how it in the order which uh, it placed the 
the uh, the the data. So we have h uh, half a second. Uh, the distance is so this is the percent of the view. Uh, active means it's currently active. Once that object is lost, that last data is going to be false. You get the x, y, and width and height of the bounding box. And this is in the coordinate system. It's 1000 by 1000 with the origo in, up in the left top corner. You're getting a timestamp. And then you get birth. So birth is when the, the, the first time the object was detected. So the age is basically the uh, time step minus birth, and that will give you the age. Then you have the center of gravity, uh, the CX and CY, and I think we set it in the middle. This is the birth center of gravity X and Y. So that was the point where it was born. And this is the, um, the total delta X that the object traveled. So positive values means that's going right and negative means it's going left. And on the delta Y, it's the uh, um, positive means down and negative means up. And then you get the confidence level. So the, this stuff, you can do a lot of things. We can say, uh, we can start filtering here and saying, I only interested in, uh, um, let's do a switch node going, let's call this one left. So we can start, you know, use this to build a counter. If message payload, and that would be Delta X, if that is less than, and we need to have put a number here, uh, less than zero means it goes left. So now we should only get objects going left on this one. But working with this data is kind of hard. Uh, I'll show you how to visualize this in a very easy way. But before that, let's do, uh, yeah, we can do a path. And sorry, I, that property does not exist in, in, oh yeah, it did exist in, in the, but you can always go back into the documentation. Oh, I need it. There we go. Now we can get some data. You can always go back, select this in the booklet and look at, so let's see, we can pull this one out and it shows, describes all on the trackers, on the path, which is going to be a path that's going to be an array of X, Y, and duration and detections are the bounding box continuously. So. So in order to visualize this, uh, we let's remove that and import examples of, it's called objects, deploy. So what this is gonna do is it's, so this is a, a template node that is gonna be showing video and also augmenting these this data and, and this is now we're just looking at trackers and we can just so now we can just go into the dashboard so let's play the video so we see a vehicle coming in here and the line is where it was born and every time that line is going to be updated, uh, that's the visualization of the data coming in. Okay, so that let's look at the detections. And done. Deploy. And we can go up here and let's do start playing. 
So here we see false detections. And we can hold this and we can see it's going to be just massive of uh, data and clear here. So maybe we could go back here. Let's do 70 and see if those detections will go away. Now we saw those are, are this one over here is just uh, we could filter that by other means. But just to show you, I'm going to put on hold here. So saving all. So here you see all the detection boxes coming in that needs to be processed. So detection has its, its use cases. Uh, you see human, bicycle, all that stuff. So it has its use cases when you're doing visualization and when you want to detect uh, static objects like a vehicle, a parked vehicle, uh, you would need uh, use detections. But the most uh, useful is going back here and doing paths. Uh, and we can let's pull down then this one to 50. So we're putting this into the bottom feet, deploy. So now we can, let's, oh, wait, let's play the video. And there we have a path. And we could just hold here and you see there's no data coming in. And there we should have one detection here. So you see the green is where it was born and the red was when it disappeared. So if we look at this data coming in here, we can enable the debug output. And uh, we can just wait. Now here we see two objects. So one was a car and the other one was a motorcycle. So if we go back here and oh, we can, let's do that. And we can just wait for that data coming in here. So if we look at this, the path data, and uh, so you see here the, um, the topic is path. You're having the ID and car and confidence timestamp. This was when it was first detected. The total delta X and delta Y, the total H, 4.3 seconds, and the distance was 93.7 of the uh, camera view. And then when you look in this array, you see these objects, and this was the first position. So this was the birth position, the CX, CY, and the duration that it spent. So one second in, in that position. Oh, it's really rainy outside. Maybe I'm not sure if it's going to be hearing the microphone. So um, 0 0.6 seconds and 0 0.4. And there's also a, the longest dwell time out of all these positions, which was one second. So with this, you can start doing, uh, create some really, really custom um, flows, detecting something very specific and then having customized output. If that would be to MQTT, email, taking a picture, um, OP, OPC UA into an automation system. So you just import OPC A node. And, and that's it. I will come with more video and describing more recipes you can do with these notes.